Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. This is the book will be that you're going to need, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not want own this book already, purchase one immediately. As I said, you will need it. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the solutions to any of the math problems from this book, you will find the solutions from day number 251 to 400. We have already solved, we have also solved all the math problem from the first edition of the revised GRE. And you will find the solutions to the math problem from the first edition from day number 1 through 250. Most of these problems in the two editions are exactly the same problem with exactly the same page numbers. There are a few differences here and there. What we're going to do today, starting from today, is to solve all the quantitative comparison questions from this book that I'm holding here, practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. Why do problems from this book, the old exam? Because the new books that they have published do not contain, do not contain the first edition and second edition. As I said, they contain almost the same problems, and they do not contain, in my opinion, enough of the quantitative comparison questions. And I found through experience that people need more help on those questions because these are not the kind of questions that we come across in our ordinary everyday exam in, the, in our school years. So starting today, we will begin to solve all the quantitative comparison questions from this book that I'm holding in my hand here. This book contains seven exams. Let's begin our work. If you happen to own this book, wonderful. If not, try to get hold of it. We are on page number 123. Now, what I'm about to say is something that you need to keep in mind throughout the entire series, which is, as soon as I put the problem on the blackboard, it's a good idea, it's an excellent idea to pause the video after every single problem, as soon as I finish putting it on the blackboard, pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together, regardless of how simple the problem may look. Do you understand? Let's begin. Problem number one. Problem number one, we've been asked to compare 40% of 50 plus 60 versus 60% of 50 plus 40. Those are the two columns. Our job is to compare the two quantities. Right away, we know the answer is not going to be D because uh, these are these are quantity, these are numerical quantities. There has to be an answer. Answer has to be either A, B, or C. The answer is not going to be D. Let's get going. We see 60 here, we see 40 here. Let's subtract 40 from both sides. If we subtract 40 from both sides, 60 becomes 20. Let's figure out what this is. We know 10%, 10% of 50 we know equals 5. We take a tenth of 50. If 10% equals 5, then 40% would have to be 4 times as much, which is 20. So this amount is 20. 20 plus 20 is 40. Now we have to figure out this part. 60% of 50. We know we know 50% of 50% of 50, 50% 50 of 50 is half of 50, which is 25, and another 10% of 50 would be another 5, which gives us 30. 30 versus 20 plus 20, so we have 40 versus 30. The answer is A. Of course, 40 is bigger than 30. Let's go to the next one, number 2. Number 2. Number two says, number two says, one twelfth one twelfth of seventeen versus versus one seventeenth of twelve. Pause the video, do it yourself this problem and then can continue. Do you understand? One twelfth of seventeen versus one seventeenth of twelve. What does off mean? What does this word mean? When we say when someone says half half of twelve, what is it what does this word mean? Half of twelve. Half of means times. Off means multiply. 
of means times half times 12 of course is 6 we know half of 12 is 6 but the point we are trying to understand is that this word of if you want to translate it from English language to math it means multiply that's what this is 1 12 of means times 17 1 12 times 17 which is just 17 over 1 which is 17 over 12 and this is going to be 117 times 12 which is 12 over 17 12 over 17 we can clearly see is less than 1 17 over 12 we can see is more than 1 so here we have a quantity which is more than 1 here we have a quantity which is less than 1 the answer is A what these quantities are what these act quantities actually are is no concern of ours. We're not interested. We're not interested in what this actually works out to be 12 over 17. We really don't care what 17 over 12 is. These questions are called quantitative comparison, which is why I write down the word computation and cross it out for emphasis. These questions are not called quantitative computation. Nobody is asking us to compute anything. We are being asked to compare them. So let's compare them. 17 over 12 is more than one. 12 over 17 is less than one. So the answer is A. Let's move on to number three. Number three. Question number three says, we are given that x plus one, x plus y rather, we are told that x plus y equals negative one. And the question is, which one is bigger, x versus y? This is a very straightforward, simple problem. Oh, what I forgot to tell you is it's a bit too late for number one, so I'm going to tell you right here. The question number one that we finished doing, this is, this is useful information because it gives you some idea as to what to, what, what to expect and how difficult the exam is. Question number one that we just finished. When it was given, when it was given the real exam, which is exactly what these are, these are real exams given in the past, 87% of the people got it right. 13% of the people missed it. Question number 12 that we just finished, uh, also is 87%. Question number three that we are about to do is 82%. 82%. What I'm trying to point out is that these are very simple, very easy, very straightforward questions. All we have to do is plug in numbers. For example, for example, they tell us x plus y is equal to 4. How about uh, positive 3 for x and negative 4 for, for y? So we'll have positive 3 and a negative 4. Positive 3 and a negative 4 is negative 1. So here we have positive 3 and here we have a negative 4. In this instance, in this case, the answer is A. But there is no reason why, cannot, why we cannot switch them. Maybe x is negative 4 and y is positive 3. There is no reason, there is no restriction here. Nobody is telling us that x has to be more than y or y has to be more than x or this, they have to be positive or they have to be negative. There are no conditions on x and y. There are no conditions whatsoever. So there is no reason why we cannot switch them. And if you were to switch them, if x is negative 4 and y is positive 3, then the answer will become b. Since we have a conflicting answer, since we, since we have a conflicting answer, the correct answer to this problem is D. The answer cannot be determined. We do not have enough, enough information to determine for sure, with 100% certain, certainty, uh, to, as to which quantity is bigger. That's what it is. When we pick the answer choices here, A, B, C, A, B, and C, when we pick answer choice A, what we are claiming is that the quantity in column A is always bigger. When we pick answer choice B, what we are claiming is that the quantity in column B is, quantity in column B is always greater. And when we pick C for the answer choice, the claim that we are making is that the two quantities are always, always, always equal. And if it turns out that there is one instance when they are not equal, then the answer that you picked is wrong. Here, since we have conflicting answer, the answer is D. Number four. Number four is a little tricky one. Number four. I'm going to start doing one problem at a time on the blackboard because it gets to be too crowded. Number four is a good problem for you to actually pause the video as I keep telling you as like a parent, as I keep repeating. Number four, 23 times 784 versus 24 times 783. Go ahead and do it. Pause the video. Resume the video. I'll give you a second to do just that. Pause the video. Do it yourself. Here we go. The quickest 
the simplest, the most economical way to solve this problem instead of doing it out because these questions are not called quantitative computation. Anybody can compute the two quantities and figure it out, but that will take too, too long. Here's what you do. Divide both columns by one of the bigger numbers here, either 784 or 783, doesn't make any difference. Let's divide both columns by 784. 784. And as we do that, this part is very straightforward. This drops out and this becomes 23. And here what we end up is 24 times 783 over 784. If you were to claim to somebody, if you were to claim to somebody that 783 divided by 784 is approximately 1, nobody's going to argue with you. 783 divided by 784 is very close to 1. It is very close to 1. So what we have here, what we have here is 24 times something that is very close to 1. 24 times something that is very, 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 very close to 1 is almost 24. It's almost 24. And this is exactly 23. Therefore the answer is B. Therefore the answer is B. The quantity in column B is bigger. Let's do number 5. Let's do number 5. Number 5 says that number 5 is also 84 percentile. O is less than R, less than T. These questions come from the 10th edition of the, of the GRE. As I showed you the book already, I'm going to show you one more time. GRE General Test, 10th edition. And this is the old-fashioned exam, and the exam used to be given in a pencil and paper format, listen very carefully, paper and pencil format, and in those days, all the questions were laid out in the exam in the order of difficulty. In this series of questions that we are doing, there are 15 questions. 1 through 5 are easy. Let's first write down here. Uh, GRE, general test. GRE. Journal test is what it was for. Tenth edition, and in this series, all the questions as I said were laid out in the in the order of difficulty because it was a paper and pencil exam, and the quantitative comparison questions came in the order of one through fifteen. Since they came in the order of one through fifteen, one to five were easy. Six to ten were medium. 11 to 15 were hard. And since we are still on number 4, the percentile is very 4, 84%. We are told that R is bigger than 0 and T is bigger than R. And the question is, which one is bigger? R over T versus T over R. As you can see, it is quite straightforward. It is quite straightforward because we are told that R is smaller than T. If R is smaller than T, don't, don't make a fuss about it, the fact that I switch between small, capital letter and small letter all the time. Don't worry about it, I have this habit here. The small R and capital R is the same thing. Since we are told that R is less than T, R is less than T, which means the top here is less than the bottom. If top is less than the bottom, this quantity is less than 1. And here we know, here we know that T is more than R, T is more than R, T is greater than R. If T is greater than R, and this quantity more than one. Since this is more than one, this is less than one, the answer is B. Let's do number six. In number six we are told that we have a triangle here, which we are told is the right angle triangle. This is X and this is 55. And we are asked to compare X versus 35. As you can see, it's a very simple problem. 82% of the people got this question right. X versus 35. If this is if this is 90 degrees, which means this angle plus this angle, X plus 55, this angle plus this angle has to add up to 90, because 90 plus 90 is 180. If X plus 55 is 90, that implies X plus 55 has to be 90. That implies that X would have to be 90 minus 55, which is 35, which is 35. X X we just found out. X we just found out is 35, so we are asked to we are being asked to compare. We are being asked to compare 35 versus 35. Therefore, the answer is C. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay.
on day number, I erased it here, on day number 402. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 402. As I said, it's an excellent idea. It's, it's not an excellent idea, it's actually essential, it is crucial, it is vital, it is a requirement, it is obligatory that you solve all the problems from this book. And like I said, solutions are there from day number 251 through 400. Or if you want to watch the original solutions, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Like I said, they're almost all the problems from first edition and second edition are the same ones. So you can watch either from day 1 through 250 or you can watch the new series from 251 through 400. Okay? Bye now.